Well, good morning, everybody. On the phone line, 35th District Representative Drew McEwen headed back to Olympia after being reelected by the voters in the 35th. Good morning, Drew. How you doing? Good morning, Jeff. Great. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on the win. And I was talking to your counterpart uh, as well, uh, Dan Griffey. And so we were just kind of talking about some of the things that uh, you guys are looking at to take to Olympia. The first question, though, is, and I asked him the same thing, do you think there'll be uh, some sort of a special session in the next month or so before the official start in January? It doesn't appear so. Uh you know, we've had a number of leadership conversations. It's not it's not our call. You know, I mean, the, the governor uh, can call us in or the legislature can put itself in with a two thirds vote of both chambers. And I don't uh, I don't see that uh, that happening. I think we're uh, still trying to figure out how we're going to do session um, to begin with. So uh, um, I don't anticipate uh, having a special session between now and, uh, and our normal start in January. Yeah, there's a lot of conversation about how the legislative session will look. Do you have a, a preference of full-time uh, in the chambers or a mixture, like a hybrid mixture, almost what they're talking about in, in the school districts? Or what are you thinking? Well, so there's a couple of thoughts on this. Um, one, I think any member that uh, uh, wants to be there needs to be there. And anybody that doesn't feel safe to do so um, should feel compelled to do so. So, um, so that's one point. Uh, the second point is, you know, we have the Constitution is very specific, um, as are our CWs, and that Olympia is the seat of government. Um, you know, I'm not opposed to doing uh, hearings, you know, committee hearings, you know, uh, remotely, and as long as we allow for full public access, um, I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. Um, where for me it starts to become an issue is when we get to voting, um, and whether that's at the committee level or um, or as a body as a whole. Um, you can't move the seat of government um, without there being, and this is under the Constitution, without there being an enemy attack or a catastrophic event. Uh, catastrophic event is not too clearly defined. Um, you know, and, and certainly one could argue that this is catastrophic, what we're dealing with with COVID. Uh, but my, my biggest concern is that uh, two things, the public and the press have access to what's going on. And the more we take it to a remote type of style, the less that, that availability for access becomes. And so that's my overriding concern there. And, and at the end of the day, we had, a, we had a meeting on this last night, a uh, number of us in leadership, that, uh, you know, how to, how to make this work. I, and I really... You know, think about it for a moment. You can go to Costco with 500 of your closest friends. You can go to the grocery store with 200 of your closest friends. You can fly on an airplane. Um, there's 98 of us, yet there's staff as well. There's 98 of us in the house in a very big building. We can make this work. Um, well, should it look like it, it has in the past? No. We've got to you certainly take precautions. But I think we can make accommodations, and I think you have to have a number of people on the floor. You know, uh uh, procedures in the House are not as simple as a bill comes up, you vote yes or no, and you move on. You have debate, you have um, you have objections, you have amendments. Uh, the, the flow of legislation is not a black and white uh, process, and so it's it's necessary to have people that are there. Um, and I think we can you know uh, put people on the floor um, and do that safely, and we can also have people in their offices and and voting from there. And, and I'm and I'm open to being able to do that. And so. That's that's the direction I'm pushing for. Am I going to prevail on that? I don't know, but I, I, I sure hope that uh, um, you know all sides of uh, the, the issue are considered. And again, the, the paramount uh, item is that you, the press, and you, the public, have full access to what's going on. And we did a mock session uh, a few weeks ago to try it out from a full remote standpoint. I'll tell you, it was an utter failure, <laughs> an utter failure. And if and if me as a member couldn't really um, um, access everything that was going on. The public or the pressure is not going to be able to either. Wow. I'm looking at this uh, week that was in the elections, and one of the most uh, biggest divides that we are seeing is something that you and I talk about often. It's the rural and urban divide uh, uh, between the the cities and the uh, r- rural communities like Mason County is, is much of. Yeah. How are we going to work um, moving forward now to try to some come up with some commonalities, some common language. It appears that Democrats have a hard time talking to Republicans in rural areas and Republicans have a hard time talking to Democrats in, in urban areas. 
Yeah, you know, I think, I think there are some things that need to be uh, that need to be a statewide uh, issue, and you know, and there's other things that need to be more locally driven. And you can't take a one size fits all. And so, I mean, let's just you know take two examples. I think it's perfectly um, uh, uh, fine for the state to set overall graduation standards for a K twelve education, but I also think that you know individual districts should be able to determine how best to achieve those. And so, and, and a good example of this is the sex education bill. That was a very heavy top-down mandate. I think that's something that should be decided more at a local level than than as a, than on a statewide basis. Um, you know, we, we've got to we, we we have to listen to each other. I mean, pick pick a downtown Seattle legislator. That person's not going to win in my district, and I'm not going to win in their district. Right. Uh, you know, we need to acknowledge that. And one, you find commonality, you find common ground where we agree on things. And you, you work on those first, and then when that's done, um, you got to have the conversations about you know what what's most important to the people in your district. And again, it doesn't always have to be this one size fits all. And I think that's where the big disconnect comes. And what we're seeing in vote results, uh, the 19th district, which is um, uh, the, the coast, it's uh, Grays Harbor, Pacific County, Waukeacum County, um, has turned uh, decidedly Republican uh, uh, with this election. And, um, you know, and two incumbent, long time incumbent Democrats lost, Senator Dean Tackle and uh, Representative Brian Blake. Uh, moderate Democrats that, that lost. And I think it's, I think that just echoes a frustration that, that is there with rural voters that, uh, you know, their, their voice just is not heard anymore. So we, we, we need to find, and again, I, I acknowledge that I'm, you know, I'm not going to win in a, in a downtown Seattle legislative district. We've got to, we've got to find a way to, uh, acknowledge the differences and allow communities to, uh, to, to, to grow and to prosper within, um, you know, their, their view of, uh, you know, the issues. And, and I think we can do that. And the sooner we can figure out how to do that, the better we're going to be as a state. 35th District Representative Drew McEwen on the phone line now heading back to Olympia after being reelected by the constituents in the 35th. And as I mentioned to Representative Griffey, I know this is way out ahead of your scheduling and everything. But once we get that figured out, uh, if it's if you're uh, up to it, we'll have our revisits, our weekly visits of things that are happening in, in Olympia. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, during this time period with, uh, you know, again, looking at how the legislature is and isn't going to operate, I think it's even more imperative that we, uh, again, make sure that the, the press and the public um, have as much uh, full access as they can. So I'm all for doing that. Look forward to it. Very cool. Thank you, sir. And congratulations once again. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Have a great day.